What I'm going to show you today is how we tighten the bearings on a French horn. So if you've heard an old French horn that gets really clacky and noisy whenever you depress the valves, a lot of time it's because of loose valve bearings. And so Jennifer, if you want to come in, I'll show them kind of what I'm talking about. What we do in a refit is we tighten down this chimney on the back of the French horn and then on the bearing plate with collets. These go inside a holder and you can see the three point design and this taper as we tighten this it squeezes on this and decreases the diameter of this and shrinks the brass material and so what the what this does is it eliminates side play and then we also trim the bearing edge right here to eliminate end play what end play is is whenever the valve moves up and down in the valve casing like this and that also contributes to noise so we will kind of cover quickly how to how i can handle this on uh, this valve and the first thing we're going to do is check the back side of the valve for any side wiggle. Can you hear that? This valve has too much play in this spindle and bearing surface. So if you'll follow me over here, I already have the collet set up. What I'm gonna do is loosen it up. Place the collet and evenly distribute the pressure. And once the horn is secure in the holding vise, I'm going to rotate the valve and feel until it seizes up. The brass tends to spring back just a little bit, so we want the valve to seize up. And then we'll release the pressure and the valve should turn again. What we're doing is we're squeezing that chimney over the valve spindle, which is acting as a mandrel, and taking up the side play. Now you can't hear anything. This one is very tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab a tool real quick. valve is sticking in one spot which tells me I might have put a little bit of a low spot in it so I'm just going to use this tapered truer and just re-expand that just a hair we can always go back and redo it if we need to but now the valve turns freely and you can't hear anything whenever it's wiggling around we're going to do the same thing on a bearing. These have a little bit of side play. I don't know if you can see that. Is it focusing? Sort of. Let me back up a little bit. Can you see how that bearing wiggles around? So let's go address that. And you'll see how the, the collars work. So we're going to take the back side off of it. Remove this one and they're slotted so they won't rotate. And there's a pin inside this main body. We'll set that aside. Put the bigger one in for the bearings. And we're gonna do the same method. Just make sure that that's sitting in there flush against the face. And then once it's secured, I'm gonna slowly rotate this valve around until I feel it start to drag and then seize up. We'll release. Rotate a few degrees. And go again until we seize up. 
Then we'll spin that on there and you can see how smoothly that bearing moves now. And all we did is squeeze inward on the brass and it takes up the slack in that bearing. So now it can't wiggle side to side. So now that we've got half of the cause of the noise eliminated, we will come back over to the French horn, check our alignment mark, install the bearing, and check for end play. This valve has very little, you can barely hear a click on the back side of it. And I don't want to remove the end play from this valve, but you can see how smoothly that moves now. Let's see if another one of these valves has more end play. I think the thumb had a lot of end play. doesn't have much end play. Maybe it was the first. Yes, it was the first valve. Can you hear that? When I'm pulling in and out on the valve, that clicking noise, especially whenever a player uses thin oil like a lot of professional hornists do, that's going to make noise. So we want to eliminate that. And the way we do that is by removing a little bit of material from the lip of these bearings. This bearing has been damaged in the past as well. So we're gonna come over here to our arbor. Install it, it's on the self-centering screw. Tighten that down, turn the speed way down because this valve doesn't have far to go. We'll just come up to a few RPM. And this is a miniature tone hole file that I'm using. It gives a nice flat grind, very smooth grind. And I'm keeping it as level as possible. <laughs> Jennifer, if you wanna come over here and show them how shiny the surface is that was just filed. So you can see that's got clean metal on there and we're going to see if that was enough to take up the end play out of this rotor. Certainly took up the end play. I went just a little too far. So what we do in that instance, we drive the rotor back out. I'm gonna use the same file and just take a little bit of material. There is a chimney on the back side that acts as a thrust bearing. And I'm gonna remove a little bit of material from that. You can see there's a dull spot down in the bottom where this isn't a perfectly flat bearing. So that's part of the wear marks from before. We're going to be refreshing this. Making better contact with the rotor. We don't have to remove much material. You can see I got that groove out of it. Blow it off with compressed air. The valve should turn now. And you can barely hear the end play now, which is what we're looking for. Now that's not too much that it's gonna be able to slam whenever the valves go up and down and create that knocking noise. I'll show you what I mean by oiling this valve. It's 
so this is trumpet valve oil very thin it's what a professional hornist would want to use on their valves we're going to put some on the spindle on the valve body install add some oil up here install the bearing no noise so that is what we're looking for if you guys have any questions just come see me at Palin Music Center in Springdale Arkansas thank you guys bye